Hello everyone, hope you are good and be happy always. Once again, welcome to Shachi's Academy and today we will discuss the first part of demand for managed economics of BBA and MBA people. So demand, what is demand normally? We call it desire or want that is I want a Ferrari, I want a yacht or something like that. We have immense amount of desires in this world but are we able to fulfill them all? No, because our demand is not effective on demand or in fact that is not demand at all. So what is demand in fact? Let's discuss and before we start our topic, we need to discuss that to study your managed economics, the best thing or the best way to study it is to think like a manager. If you will think like a manager, you will instantly know that what a manager intends to do and how he thinks because there is a difference between how a commoner thinks and how a manager thinks because for a common person, uh, he wants uh, commodities which are not very expensive or which are at reasonable price at least but for a producer how does it think or a manager he thinks or he intends to sell his commodities at highest possible price because he has to earn profit so what is the intention of a consumer to save his hard-earned money but what is the intention of a manager to extract money for consu from consumers and increase the price or to keep the price at that level at what at that he can uh, just extract the maximum amount or earn maximum profit. So profit earning is the main motive of a manager and saving his hard earned money or getting the commodities at reasonable price and cheap price is the basic intention of a consumer. So there is a difference between the concept of demand for a consumer and concept of demand for a producer. So when you study manager economics, think like a manager. Okay. So we all are managers. We have a business right now and we will study the topic now. Okay. Demand according to manager. What does he think? So demand, he thinks that for people it is a desire or want, but the demand is not desire or want. It is effective demand. What is effective demand? Demand is effective desire or want for a commodity which is backed by the ability and willingness to pay for it. So what we have to see here that it is effective desire that is backed by what ability and willingness ability. What is the ability that we have the amount of money that is required to purchase any particular commodities. For example, I want a bike. So I need to have at least 1 lakh to 1.5 lakh rupees in India to purchase any good bike or you can say decent bike. So in that case, I need to have that amount of money. That is the first condition to purchase a bike. Okay. Ability. This is ability. That means income. You have that amount of money. Then willingness. Am I willing to pay that money? That is my readiness to pay for that money is my willingness to pay for it. So if I want bike, I need to have at least 1 lakh rupees. Then I should be ready to pay that amount to the dealer to purchase that bike. So that is effective demand or you can say demand. Okay, then here example, demand for oranges for a household at price of rupees 50 is 5 kg per week. What is written so? Because demand is never taken in absolute conditions. Demand is taken in relative conditions like here it is related to your uh, price at what per price it is uh, sold in the market and what is the time frame. It may be one day, it may be... Um, one hour also, it may be one day, it may be market period for one or two days, it may be a month, it may be a year, it may be a decade, or it may be a century. So in what time frame it has been taken, that too is very important when you consider any demand. So here, this is the example that demand depends on certain elements or certain uh, factors and what are those? First is price, P for price, then Y for income and T for taste. The demand basically depends upon your price for any commodity. Commodity in question. Here the commodity in question is your oranges. Maybe apples, maybe bike as I told you, maybe a bottle, maybe a Ferrari, maybe a yacht, maybe an aircraft, maybe anything, pen, pencil, uh, notebook, anything, whatever you want to purchase, maybe a laptop, maybe a computer, anything. Okay. So demand for any particular thing depends on its price basically. That it depends on your income as well. Because if you don't have the amount which is required to purchase any commodity, how will you purchase that commodity at all? So if I want a laptop, I need to have that amount of money that is required for purchasing any particular type of laptop. So income is also important. That taste and preferences are very important. Here, if I don't want a laptop, so why would I purchase it or why 
should I have the money to purchase it? So taste and preferences for that particular thing. For example, here oranges. I don't like oranges, so why would I purchase them even at rupees one? I won't be purchasing them even if someone gives me. I won't be having them, so I don't have taste for oranges. I may not purchase them, but if I like them, I will purchase them at rupees hundred as well. So that is also a case. Then demand is equal to function of price. How? Here there will be several factors on which your demand may depend, but basically according to Marshall analysis. According to uh, Professor Alfred Marshall, according to his analysis, demand is basically the function of its price. Because why? When your price rises, for normal people, why I'm saying normal people? Because for super rich people, there is no uh, thought process going on in their brains that this is very expensive. I won't purchase because they can spend on anything. They may purchase island, they may purchase aircraft, they may purchase um, anything. Stadiums or cricket teams you can say or kabaddi teams in india so super rich people do not give a thought to the price of commodities so it is not economics is not about those people basically for these type of commodities like oranges and apples they won't even think ever, uh, even think before purchasing them but for people like us for normal people price for a commodity is really very important to think about so what we have to see here that marshall says professor, professor alfred marshall says he's a very great economist in economics, so he says that demand basically depends on its price for the commodity. So here, if price increases, demand decreases. And if price decreases, demand increases for any particular commodity. Here, for example, if price for oranges increases to rupees 500 in India, people won't be able to purchase, normal people I can say, normal people won't be able to purchase even 1 kg of oranges. They will say, we will purchase them when, when they will be cheap in season. So in, during season, the oranges are quite cheap. So they can purchase at that price. So they will wait for prices to reduce. Okay. So to fall down. Okay. So here. Then we need to see elements of demand. Now, as we discussed here, it depends on, upon ability and willingness to buy. It's effective desire. Okay. So here, elements of demand are basically here. Uh, when you give your exams in MBA, sometimes you may be asked this question, what are the elements of demand? Then you can answer with this. And you can just explain them in detail as well or in brief. Uh, if it is given in brief, you can write in brief. Uh, otherwise, in detail also you can explain. Here, desire for a commodity. At least you need to have desire for a commodity. You need to, uh, you should want that commodity first of all. Just like I should desire oranges before purchasing them or before anything else I need to consider. Okay. So the here, then second is ability to purchase. I need to have that amount of money which is required to purchase. Let me have my marker. Okay. So here, uh, ability to purchase. Second is ability. I need to have that income, amount of income, then willingness. I should be ready to spend that amount of money which is required to purchase that commodity. Suppose um, I have 1000 rupee note, uh, uh, so, sorry, 2000 rupee note in my pocket, but I'm not willing to uh, buy oranges at rupees 50. Or I don't want oranges at all. So I'm not willing to purchase them. So in that case also demand is not effective. And that is not called demand at all. Then, willing, and then given price. Demand is always considered on a given price. Here price is rupees 50. It may be 250. It may be 500 even. Then given time. It means time frame. Here we, have, we have time frame. That is per week. In one week that is seven days. Okay. So we here we have framed a code for you people. That is D-A-W-G-G. Can say dog uh, that's quite simple to remember and you won't be facing any problem even okay then concepts of demand here concepts of demand you need to know these concepts uh, to become a manager or being a manager you need to have a, a basic understanding of the of all these concepts or even if you want to open any business you need to understand that accently and exposed demand then um, you might have heard or may not have heard these type of uh, terms X and T Ante for advance, you can say advance, okay, advance, that means there are certain tools which are used in markets, that is market forecasting tools, that is demand forecasting tools are used, in those demand forecasting tools, uh, mentors may come to know that this is the potential that market is having in a new year, uh, that is 2021 is going on, this is just December and next uh, month will be January 2022, in new year, 22 in January 22 what would be the demand for cars people would be gifting cars they may purchase cars for their own use also what would be the demand for cars so that is what 
expecting demand that is expected demand or intended demand by people or demand potential in the market so what is the potential suppose we think through demand forecasting methods that people may purchase 1 lakh cars in particular market okay so 1 lakh is the demand potential then ex post post means after that okay reality that means uh, for ex post already purchase actual amount purchased that means actually what is the number of cars that has been purchased in market we were expecting 1 lakh cars in market that means 100,000 cars were expected to be sold in the market by managers but what is the actual uh, demand that has happened or really have been purchased in the market that may be 90,000 cars maybe 10,000 short of 1 lakh so the real demand over here is the reality real amount purchases actual amount purchases 90,000 so what is the deficit over here? 10,000 cars. So 10,000 cars will go to the inventory. So here, accent means advance, A for advance, and X post means later on, that is the actual demand. Then direct demand and your derived demand. Direct demand. What is direct demand? That is basically consumer's demand. Demand for a market is direct demand. For example, demand for chip, packet of chips, uncle uh, chips, lays, etc. Everything just like this is the direct demand. I went to the market, I purchased this bottle for me. This is direct demand. Why this is direct demand? Because I can directly consume this. Okay, I'm a consumer. I can use this bottle. I can't eat this bottle, but of course I can use the services of this bottle. I can fill hot water in this. I can fill cold water in this and I can use this. I can use my cell phone. I can use this marker. I can use this board. I can use this tube light. So I consume the services of tube light. So what is that? This is direct demand. Here, the definition is consumer's demand is direct demand as it directly gives satisfaction to the consumer. We use, if I'm using this marker, I'm getting satisfaction because I'm able to write uh, on this board with this marker. So I'm getting satisfaction. If I consume some chips, I'm getting satisfaction. My um, the hunger is satiated. So in that case, I'm satis being satisfied. So here, it gives direct satisfaction to the consumers that... Example over here for consumers demand is consumption goods like bread, biscuit, bike, car, demand for flats for dwelling purposes. Okay, so if you consume bread, that is direct demand. Jam, for uh, demand for jam is direct demand. And uh, demand for oils, all the vegetable oils that we consume, that is uh, for baking of vegetables, that is uh, recipes, that is our direct demand. So all the uh, commodities in the market which are sold, and which are purchased by consumers for their satisfaction of uh, wants is known as your direct demand. Then, derived demand. What is derived demand? For making bread, what do you require? You require white flour, you require chemicals, you require sugar, you require bread, uh, sorry, butter, uh, sugar, etc., salt, etc. So, in that case, the demand for all these raw material is your derived demand. And the people who bake bread is derived demand. That means demand for labor is derived demand. What is that derived demand? Derived demand is demand for factor inputs. You might have heard that a businessman or a producer uses factors of production for producing any final input. Right? For manufacture of bread, you need labor, you need bakery, you need uh, uh, baking equipment, you need uh, raw material just like white flour and everything and that is what? That is derived demand. If people demand more bread in the market, more baked commodities in the market, more biscuits, more bakery products in the markets, then demand for all these raw material, all these inputs would be more. And that would be your derived demand. Here, example, producers demand for factor inputs. I told you factors of production, that is land, labor, capital, raw material, capital equipment, machinery, that is your factor inputs. Is derived demand, let me put a dot on your eye. Okay, so here, is the derived demand as it is derived from the demand for final inputs. What are final inputs? With final? Yes. Outputs. It should be output. Okay. So here, final output. What is the final output? Just like bread, butter, biscuit, bottle, everything is final output. So demand for final outputs, it is derived from them. Okay. If demand for chips is more, Demand for potatoes will rise in the market. If demand for ketchup is more, sauce is more, then demand for tomatoes will rise in the market. If demand for pasta is more, demand for white flour will go in the market. Demand for, uh, you can say, pizza is more, then cheese will go up. Demand for cheese will go up in the market. So, this is type of derived demand. Okay, then example, demand for raw material, 
demand for bricks for making houses or bridges, demand for cement, demand for wood, for mason, that like people who construct all these buildings, then carpenter, etc. is your derived demand. Then, next comes our two levels of consumer demand. We already discussed our consumer demand. What is consumer de demand? That is direct demand. And two levels are individual demand and market demand. Who is an individual? A single person like me, like you, who consumes, who goes to the market and uh, just purchases a commodity which uh, you or me like in the in the market. So that is our individual demand. For, that is demand from a single person is individual demand. Likewise, demand for market or market demand is demand for whole market. The people, all the people in the market, what is the amount of commodity that is purchased by all the people in the market is your market demand. Here we can see demand from individual consumer for a commodity at a given price during a given time period. We already know that any demand is dependent on its price and it is given in a time frame. So per week, per month, per day, per year, per decade, per century, like that. Okay, per six month. Okay, so this is your time frame and that is particular price has been given. So you can change the definition to market demand also. We can say demand from all the consumers. Here it was individual consumer. Now we can say demand from all the consumers in the market for a commodity at a given price during a given time period is called market demand. That is so simple. Same definition can be used but just by um, changing only this much uh, of the term. Uh, this, uh, these many terms like from all the consumers in the market. Individual, in place of individual you need to write all the consumers in market. Right? So this is uh, the first part of our demand. The basic understanding you might have uh, received from this uh, video and hopefully if there is any problem you will always send me in the comment box and take care. God bless you. Thanks for liking the video and subscribing to us. Keep shouting your love on us and thank you so much. Take care. God bless you.